Hi, I'm Mark Crea, CEO of Feed My Starving Children. We have a program called the PBFA. This is where we go in deeper with a partner overseas and with other organizations. And together, we do a concentrated effort driven by that community. The condition of that community was appalling. The socioeconomic conditions was worse than any part of our region, which is already a very impoverished uh, community. All we were swarmed with were nearly 500 malnourished children who probably had not bathed or washed their clothes for months. And that is the community we went into. When you go in communities, in developing countries, parents or community leaders, they spend a lot of our resources on food, right? And so when we are able to go and say, what is the biggest need in those communities? It's food. If we can fill that gap for three to five years, what does that allow you to do, right? So now you can actually start to look at long-term solutions that you could not before. What would you do if you have money only to feed your kids? Would you buy seeds to plant or would you buy food to eat, right? And so that's a today's need. And so PBFA allows us to go long term. We're, we're here in the, in the Philippines uh, launching a new PBFA. This project-based food assistance, it is your project. We're just honored to play a small part in this bigger plan. Thank you. Thank you no? for welcoming us. We can't wait to see the progress that you will make in this community. And so we chose uh, an area to start with in uh, Tewuj, about eight to 10 miles out in the country. It's got about 900 people living in that uh, village. Program ça, ni kapab pote pumonyo, yon lot e bagay ki kapab fe yo vi pi bien, e ki kapab fe la vi yo grandi pi bien, e ki kapab ede yo sorti nan pauvreté, nan misé, nan plus nécessité ke yo ye, sa kapab pote yon fwi ki kapab fe yo vi bien, and we sat with them and asked them, what are your five biggest needs? And they prioritized it. So we addressed the issue of uh, hunger with food distribution and cooking for the children on site on the land. If we have malnourished kids, they will not um, learn the same way as a healthy kid. So for them to have manna pack rice, and which manna pack rice is a, a complete food because it has soy protein, rice, and vitamin and minerals. So that nourish the kids. KFL first, yo. I mean, Timon yo di, when yo di manna pack la ete yo bien pour tete yo mange. Yo mange manna pack la. Depuis Timon yo mange manna pack la, non de Jésus. Mam yo te faibli, mam yo va faibli encore. Ah non de. Honestly, I don't know how many children would have died in that village without the food we are providing. I don't know how many girls would have been forced into marriage at the age of 14, 15, 16, if we had not given them opportunity to come to church and to come to school. Now that we receive the manna pack, it's just something that provides for a family. So they don't have to go to the dump anymore and start just digging into the trash to get some income or get food. Now they receive the rice. They have said the fact that we know that we're going to have food frees us up to think about things we've never been able to think about before. To hope and dream. When you're hungry, all you think about is, I'm hungry. But when that is taken care of, now you can think about, I wonder what my kids can do for the future. I wonder what we can do to help our community be better. It's one of the first things they said is like, we're here to help, what do you want? You choose, you make your decisions. We have seen tremendous result when we have projects being led by people within the community. They have the respect, they have the knowledge, they know best, right? We cannot come from the U.S. and tell them, this is what you should do. But we go and said, what should be done? We wanted them to own this project. So we brought together local leaders, church leaders, elders, youth, women, and put them into a local project committee and we sat with them and asked them, what are your five biggest needs? 
and they prioritized it. We met with the LPC members so that we know each other and uh, we asking for their inputs, knowing more about them and the community that we'll be having the program with. We identify the needs, the gaps, and uh, some problems in the community through the help of the local project committee. We are here to support and to guide and to help come up with creative solutions and to provide our experience. But you have the knowledge, you have the expertise of what is happening in your community, Comitang. When I visited and I took a photo with these kids, I sat and had lunch with them. It brought tears to our eyes. I already had 8,000 in school with over 200 teachers recruited. And I had no plan at all to set up another school. But the community led the way in addressing their challenges and just sent the kids to school. There are kids in Nkwanya that have never set foot into a classroom. 12 year olds that are in like first grade because they've never been able to study before that are hungry to have their lives changed by the education that will be offered there. So we had to turn the church into classrooms. The rest, they started studying under the tree. Halfway through 2023, community leaders came together, mobilized resources, and started construction of grass-thatched classrooms. I've never seen this anywhere in our region. The hunger for education. The entry for us was feeding. They had hope. They got the energy to go out and, you know, and farm. Children were strengthened. Their nutrition was improved. Their health was improved. That was one of the most inspiring and challenging experience we've ever had in 20 years of doing this work. And you can see really like a like an awakening in the culture, in that community, that people want to break that cycle of poverty and lack of education and having these resources right in front of them and how hungry they are uh, to start making changes for their community. Things are moving slower than we like, but with gangs and fuel prices and shortages and all those kinds of challenges. Uh, we just have to keep going, okay God, maybe it's not today, maybe it's next week, maybe it's next month, but we're just gonna keep moving forward. And uh, we're getting ready to, to dig a well. We've got a new church uh, building up there. Uh, the, the people's lives are changing. There's always challenges, but uh, there's, there's hope. And I think that's what, when you see hope and joy in a community of a thousand people plus, um, that's encouraging for me to see that they're better today than they were two, three, four years ago. At the start, it was difficult for us to understand the limitations of PBFA. Because we thought, okay, are we just going to give them food? Are we just going to give them agriculture support? But the community led the way. The program has grown. Three, four, five years from now, it will be a completely transformed community through the PBFA project. One of the first PBFAs we did in Bate 106, um, that was over five years, and we did see uh, food security improve. The children's body mass index, that improved. So by the end of it, four out of five children uh, had healthy weight. And the same way then the adults, they, their food security improved a lot too. So by the end, I wanna say close to 80% also had little to no hunger. So again, in that one, people said that they were um, able to better find jobs and jobs that would pay a livable wage at the end of the PBFA versus at the beginning. The community, even with us gone three years, has been bringing water pipes into homes and doing this and this and this. And we say, we're not involved in that anymore. That's just them going out and doing that on their own, which is really cool. Like that is exactly what we want from a PBFA. Es importante el programa porque la gente del Bate 106 siente un grande alivio en su vida, en el futuro de sus hijos. Hay posibilidad ellos va a la escuela, no va con hambre. Hay posibilidad aprender mejor. Gente, realmente es un sueño que estamos ya viviendo porque fue una Una de las cosas que siempre deseamos es eh, eh, la reparación de la vivienda. Eh, personas ya que ya no tienen que pensar dónde van a conseguir el pan del día. Eh, ya niños también ya tienen por lo menos eh, una escuela donde acudir. En three, four, five years from now, Nakwanya community that was in total hopelessness will probably become one of the most productive communities 
in, in, in the region. I've, I've, I've watched so many NGOs in northern Uganda come and go. What is left are signposts. They came with their initiatives, they controlled it, they forced it onto a community. When their three years were over, they closed their offices, sold their four by four cars and left. And the community is still in poverty. But what we've done with the PBFA in Nakwanya in northern Uganda is to let the community own it, let them drive it. We entered with food, we, brought, we planted a church, we set up a livelihood project, and they have gone ahead and initiated other projects. The beauty of PBFA is, is creating a platform for change, but when FMSC exits, it's a lasting change that stays with them. Because it started with them, when we exit, it will stay with them. And that's the biggest thing, is seeing that change in community leaders, in, in young people, having that platform to say, I can do it. One of the most important things about the Marino Project, people are now starting to believe in a dream. And then now, with the education and livelihood, we are providing them means towards a dream. Food was the foundation. We started by delivering Mana Park Rice. The first project we undertook was delivery of food and, and feeding the children on the ground. That was the foundation needed for the growth of all these other activities. If we had not started with food, if we didn't have food to give them, you can't speak to a hungry household, you know, to get up and do agriculture. You can't educate children in your school who have not eaten any meal the whole day. They probably slept hungry the night before. So Mana Park Rice set the foundation. And watch a PBFA and watch somebody and their families grow and see a community that once needed help, now being self-sustaining and helping others, to me, that's the greatest thing. What's next? Uh, hopefully, uh, the growing of all the livelihood that we have. And then from there, I was planning to put up feeding centers, wherein we ourselves will now start feeding those who need to be fed. It's really about starting with the food, but then expanding beyond that to programs that help them provide real livelihood, real hope for the future. Your small investment into the project-based food assistance program with FMSC will change lives. It will change lives. And, and it is changing lives. We're so excited about uh, seeing what the Nakwanya community will look like in years to come as we invest into that community. Whatever you have packed, whatever you have sent to us has changed so many lives in this small island called Marinduque. So the first thing is I would really have to say thank you, thank you. You are not just feeding the hungry. I hope you realize you are feeding Jesus. Every time you put in one of those packets, you're, you're putting something for him. At the end of the project, the best compliment you can get is when they said we did it. Not, not FMS did it, but they did it for themselves.